Hey, today on the 167, we say goodbye to confusion and hear a seven minute story. Welcome to the 167. Hey, welcome to the 167 this week. I am joined live and in person by Pastor Rick George. Yes, not in bed or laying like, you know, you couldn't see me last week. She had no idea. I was just going to say on the phone, but now I'm yeah. wondering if you were in bed. Well, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> and with us always with his hair flowing in the breeze. Mm. Yeah, that's, mm. that's Pastor Curtis. Jake Reeves. Yes. Courtesy, I came home last night and Penny, uh, Penny decided to brush my hair. She really, really wanted to. What do you so use on that? Like mane and both, tail? Both Sarah and I got our hairs brushed and it was huge. Like, because <laughs> neither of our hair like responds well to brushing. It just turns into a giant poof. It looks like an 80s so, concert. Yeah, exactly. So they, no. have, they have scissors for that. You know, they do. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Rick turned into the dad who's going to send you to the army to get your hair cut. But how would I be the. Uh, you know, edgy worship pastor. If I didn't have, yeah, you have the long know, hair, it was long this scruffy hair. comic relief. Yeah, and it's yeah. so much cheaper than getting tattoos. So, <laughs> if someone go. wants to like, Truth. you know, fund me getting tattoos, I will do that. But I don't want to pay for it. So there you go. I'm just working on my permanent shirt. You know. Ooh, nice. Um, so today we are here to talk about continuing our series. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Goodbye. Yep. All right. Sorry, so, I, was, I was walking you into that joke. So no. uh, we're in that series, Say Goodbye. We were saying goodbye to confusion this week. Yeah. So I just wanted to start off by asking you guys, what is something that you feel like you are constantly confused by or a story of when you were very, very confused? I'm constantly confused by. Oh. <laughs> Consistently, constantly, continuously. Um, uh, you know, I can, I'll go back a ways. Um to the hip hop scene. Of, yeah, of a time when I was confused. Um, you've heard me talk about it before, but I was on staff at a church as the associate pastor, uh, had gone on vacation, felt like I heard God speak to me in that moment to say that I was going to be a senior pastor. Um, I came home from that vacation, had a meeting with the senior pastor, um, and he asked me in this meeting, uh, you know, where my heart was, what, you know, where I felt like God was leading me. And um, so I, I told him, uh, I poured my heart out and said, you know, I feel like God has, you know, brought me here to this place to, you know, to help make this church as good as it can be and um, to support leadership. And, and ultimately, at the end of that meeting, after I talked for half an hour, then he pushed across termination papers and it's like yeah, okay well today's your last day we do it's not like, agree on where god is calling you that's, and, that's simple. yeah no i was like well wow i'm a i'm a bit confused here you just asked me kind of where god was leading and what god was doing in the ministry just to say yeah you're today's your last day and it was a very confusing time um so much so that um I did initially rely very much on my feelings. Like I, I was so confused and I was like, you know what? I don't even feel like being in ministry anymore. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel, and it was just all, I don't feel like it. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'll just go back. I just feel like it'd be easier to go back into the secular workplace. Um, I had several years of management. I was like, I'll just go back and I can probably make more money. Um, probably have better insurance and retirement plans. I, I'll just go back and, and do that. That's what I feel like doing. But um, that's not what I wound up doing, but that's what I felt like in the moment in my confusion. So. The, the irony in that is I have watched many, many people take that exact same approach to breaking up with someone. It's like, how do you feel the relationship's going? Yep. Gosh, I love you. Uh, here's your termination yeah, papers. Really. And it results in that same confusion of like, Wait a minute, Wait. what? Yeah, or I, when you take them out on a nice date so yeah. you can break up with them. It's, it's like, like, 
you gotta you gotta work on the timing of that because if it's yeah. like it's like and turning. we're breaking up here's yeah. the steak that we're i was like yeah. here's the appetizer yeah. oh yeah. no no, <laughs> no i have jumped at the gun <laughs> yeah so yeah that that's, but that, that's that my is story. a confusing yeah. time yeah so what about you pastor jake i was trying to think of like you know really whimsical stuff but then you started telling your story and then like the only story yeah. i could think of was Legitimately, when uh, so before I came to New Life, I was on part time at a church and was just like at utter burnout um, because I was working, you know, fifty to sixty hours at uh, at research at K State, and then probably twenty hours with the church and twenty hours doing uh, photography pretty heavily with Sarah. And I remember that I just realized like I had to give somewhere, and so I just I was going to step down. Like I wasn't leaving the church, but I was like I need to step down okay. out of the role. And I just remember being really, really confused when I was stepping down out of that. And then I, um, I was practicing sending out resumes <laughs> and I sent a resume to new life and uh, wait a minute, we were a practice resume <laughs> and then you guys, uh, it's a practice run, man, you, you started pursuing and I'm like, Oh wait, this, this is a thing. And I was just, I was really confused at what God was doing because I'm like, no, I'm in a place of burnout. I'm supposed to be done, but instead um, I was having to step into full-time ministry and like God protected me, he restored me and uh, like it was good, but I was super confused like in the moment. And it was, and it was a weird thing to communicate to people because they're like, wait, you said you were burning out. Why are you going deeper into ministry? And it's like, yeah, but because I was able to come here, I was able to offload my full-time job at K-State and kind of consolidate. To, well, just hearing yeah. that story makes me feel a lot better because this is just a practice hiring <laughs> process. Like, yeah, so yeah it's, it was a practice resume makes me feel a lot better than five, <laughs> five years of practice. Five years of practice. We're... It's like we, none of us thought this was going to last more than yeah. six months, but uh, here we are. We're still practicing. <laughs> just, just stubborn. We're just it's yeah. like a giant game of chicken. <laughs> no, I was same thing. Like now, I'm like. Oh, I was just going to say something funny, but like now you guys are burying your souls. I, we didn't mean to take it that way. It's just, it's kind of what happened, you know? I know. Because we all know that you're in a constant state of confusion. Do you want to talk about like I driving or something? Like, yeah, like if you've ever gotten lost, maybe I'll go, confused I'll just, where you were. I'll go halfway. <laughs> okay. Are you right? Here we go. Um, I talk, talk to Chris about this all the time, and it's kind of a joke around our house. People are like, Lucas has one feeling. I honestly sometimes feel like an alien where I like will encounter other humans and I'm in a constant state of confusion where it's like, like, just take sports. Like, on Monday, we came into staff meeting. Everybody had watched <laughs> the can, Chief game. I could tell. And you were like, oh, this, what? like, naming people by name. Like, every time somebody's like, they come up and, like, it's like, hey, the Chiefs won. And I'm like, I understand that. And they're like, I don't, like, name. So, I mean, like, Kelsey did that. And I'm like, your daughter Kelsey did what? And I'm like, oh, no, he's talking oh. about a running back or something yeah. from the for the Chiefs. Yeah. And I just sit there, and I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, like, for a no. timestamp, this is directly after the uh, Chiefs divisional win right. where the 13-second the comeback, yeah. the field goal overtime, yeah. and like for those that – but, yeah, go on. Yeah, but, I mean, like I'm just sitting there going, I, like yeah, – Whatever. I, and it, but it's like – and it's the same thing. Like people will talk about like their traditions, the superstitions, and yeah. you know, like, all this stuff, and I'm just going, you are – you're in a cult. Yeah, <laughs> like you're, like, you are in a different world than I live in. And so I just, I'm in a constant state of confusion. It's like sports and dogs. Like, I don't get it. And that's like most of America. People oh love gosh. sports Why and dogs. Why do you hate America so I much? I know. I'm you like, apple pie, an, it's gross. You punched an eagle in the face recently? I hate bald eagle. No. <laughs> but like, I, I'm just sitting there like, I'm watching people. Yeah. And I'm like, I've, I feel constantly in the state of confusion where I look at people. I'm like, I do not. It's like being an anthropologist, or like yeah. I feel like Jane Goodall with like where she's like living with the orangutan and just like you're like <laughs> I, he does this, and I understand what it means when he does that, but I don't understand. Like, so there you go. I'm the alien, so I just <laughs> I, I live in a constant state of confusion. But we're trying to say goodbye to confusion this week, and um, we talked about confusion in our culture, and like so I'll use that to segue. Like I said, there there are aspects of our culture that like I just don't get it. You know, like, and you see that with people where it's like, they're really passionate about something and you're like, I don't, I don't understand that at all. Like, where, where do you see the low? I feel like our culture and you were talking about it this week that it's, it's ramped up. People just feel this malaise of confusion. So where do you see some of those things happening? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is political confusion. I mean, it used to be 
like, oh yeah, you're Democrat, you're Republican. We don't always see, and but now it's, well, we don't even care. We don't like each other. I will but, shank you. Uh, yeah, you know? it's like yeah. there's just such a confusion around political beliefs. Um, there's religious confusion, where again, we're just bombarded with all of the BS. Belief the belief system. The belief system. It's like this you know? asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> belief system. Um, yeah, and there's so many new belief systems that mm -hmm. it's just confusing because it sounds you know, like it. We've become so smart. We found a loophole, you know, in the Bible, and you know, it's it, it, here's what it really means. You know, and so it, it's confusing to try to figure out: is that real? Is it? Is that? Is that really what God's word says? So there's some, you know, theological confusion. Um, I'll jump off the high dive. Gender confusion, yeah. sexuality confusion. That's happening. I was like, yeah, all these um, topics are like so much bigger. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's yeah, there's but, all these yeah. these separate elements of confusion yes. where I know this is, you know, what I was, what I am, what I thought, who, and now but I'm this way, or I'm this person, or I believe this, or, and, but to say, okay, give me some solid proof, like what, well, it's a little confusing. I can't, you can't really zero in. But see, yeah, and, yeah. and this is the thing that I would contend that like parallel tracks that and it like at, exacerbates it, I would even say, is I think our language has especially become confused because of that. It's like, Instead of saying, like you said, like if, if we're talking about transgenderism or whatever, it's just like instead of going, oh, this person is a biological man who is confused about that, going, yeah. he's, and then we make up a term, we invent right. new language, like even to the point where, like I've watched people kind of debate each other on the transgender issue, and the most effective thing I've seen is somebody just walks up and goes, define a woman. And it's like, because if you can't say... Shania Twain. Yeah. Man, oh, she feels like a woman. No, but I mean, if you can't say it's somebody with ovaries that has reproductive systems, but yeah. it's like, if it's just femininity, it's like, well, no, men can be feminine. Well, it's long hair. Well, no, you can have long hair. It's like, there's nothing that defines yeah. the word. Yeah. And so it's the same thing with theology. And um, like I said, it's like, well, if we bend this word, if we twist this word, or even like, I, um, I asked my girls about this with science, where I'm like, you know, they'll say, well, you know, this part of the cell is the cytoplasm. And I'm like, great, what is that? And they're like, what do you mean it's the cytoplasm? Like read, like, read the next paragraph. It's like scientists have no idea what this is or what it does, yeah. but we gave it a label, there. yeah. therefore we sound really smart. And then it's like, if you push them on it, it's like, well, we don't really know. Yeah, so, I mean, so when you ask, you know, where do we, you know, where's the biggest, greatest area of confusion? <laughs> I don't Every everything everywhere. I'm confused just, yeah. as to what. Yeah, it just is everywhere. It's consuming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that you're like really targeting? No, not really targeting. I mean, the thing that popped into my head, but we went off the deep end, so I'm, yeah. I feel like this is like <laughs> waiting back. Is I mean, even in things like uh, life aspirations and stuff, people are confused in the they think that you can literally have it all. Mm. That you can, mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like there is a give and take, obviously, you know, if, yeah. if you're not home, then that's, that's a, that's an impact that's going to happen on kids right. and stuff. Yeah. And so, um, it is like, that is one of those, you know, confusing things where it's like, well, no, you can literally have everything that you want. You can, but you're probably gonna burn out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like humans were not made for that type of rhythm. Um, and it's also why, you know, we have, we've had the family structure, um, where there's support and ebb and flow and stuff like that. But yeah, I've said that before, I think, but my dad used to beat that into a, my brother and I skulls when we were little is it says, if you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else, Yeah. yeah. but we're trying to say yes to absolutely everything. Right. And then when you, in the end, then when you can't have it all, then it, what, it, why? And yeah. That, it creates now I'm confused. Yeah. You know, I was told I could have whatever I wanted. And I, well, it yeah, adds yeah. to those feelings of anxiety and depression because yeah. it's like, well, am I doing something that I can't get this? Yeah. But like yeah. even that. So like one of the things that you were talking about this um, this past Sunday is you were talking about the voices that we listen to. Like so even there I'm going, 
my dad says this, but you brought up the fact that you said like a lot of confusion, um, it comes by listen to, listening to too many voices. And so I was just like, can you elaborate on that? Like, what is the voice or voices that you think are worthwhile? Like, do we just go into tunnel vision then? Or like, where, where should we look for some of those voices of truth? Uh, well, okay. So the biblical basis is, you know, in the abundance of words, sin is not lacking. Okay. Mm. So on a personal level, the more you talk, the more likely you are to sin. It just, you start saying things that you shouldn't say. We all understand that. Okay. okay. Take that out into the big picture of things. The more people that are talking, then the more likelihood you are of hearing things that are inaccurate, hearing sin, mm. hearing, and it creates confusion. And so um, I know this is not a popular thing to say, especially on a podcast, but it is are a you about to not podcast? Yeah, so it, yeah, is, it is the danger of the addiction of podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like, I just listened to Joe Rogan. It's like, really? Like... That's an eight-hour commitment every week. Yeah, and where's that, that taking you? Yeah, so how is that drawing you closer to Jesus, or what? Like, where are some of those thoughts? Mm -hmm. it, does, is it everything he said was bad, or was there something in there that then, you know, took you? So yeah, you just start listening to this person, and you know, was this pastor? Is that a bad pastor? That no, but. Why do you listen to that and then this and then another? Eventually, what you're going to have is all this bleeding over of theology where now I'm kind of confused. I'm, I don't really know what I believe. Right. Like, it just, uh, so what's the balance? I don't know. Like, again, pick a couple, go with it. Um, make sure that it's in alignment with. The people that you are in direct community with. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I think that like what you're saying there, that foundational piece, because obviously for us as Christ followers, like that's one of those things where you're like admitting your own biases. I'm going, there are literally times where um, I'm even listening to something that you might call conservative. It's something that's religiously based. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like, but he says something and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't believe that. You know, yeah. like, and you like have to go, how long have I been listening to this before like that kind of popped up? Right. And it's like going, like my brother always says that to me, he says, eat the fish and leave the bones. So he's like, you know, going, oh yeah, I don't really, but again, it's like, how do I know that unless I'm weighing it against scripture? Yeah. You know, it's like, if I don't take, you know, like Joe Rogan, I guess you're, you know, it's going to be aliens and yeah, who knows? <laughs> right. But he's got some really interesting guests on there. Yeah. I love it for conspiracy theories. Um, but like I said, if even if you're listening to Christian podcasters, and I'm not going back to the word and saying, right. here's the thing. So like like you said, like I listen to Christian podcasts, and it's like, eh, I listen to this guy, and I listen to that guy. Here's my guys that I'm like, I can probably tell you that I like fairly well 95% agree with, and this is my foundation. Right. Mm -hmm. And even them, you know, like, are going to say something, and I'm like, I don't know about that. And if it creates confusion, where do I go? I go back to the word. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. I just think that the more people you listen to, mm. the, like the more confusion you open yourself up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have to have that solid group. Like, so the people at your table, right. Okay. That you're actually at the table with that you can have conversations with, um, or debrief. Yeah. Um, and if you got the wrong people, even there, it's like, well, shouldn't you, have some diversity, uh, like kind of, but not. It's a different, but uh, who's yeah. in your circle and, yeah. you know, just. Well, too, like, I don't know if you guys do that where it's like, I, I feel that pressure sometimes where people are like, don't be in your own echo chamber. And I'm like, great. But if I go, I'm going to take something that's A and something that's Z, I don't think you're going to get a lot of. You can't marinate in it. Yeah, yeah like it's going to be, oh, this person <laughs> yeah. says this person's lying and this person says, like they're two completely polar opposites. Yeah. And it that's a lot harder to fish through and find something middle where it's like, here's somebody that they're both talking, they're kind of in the same vein and this person has a different flavor and this person has a different flavor than going, I'm going to listen to two people that hate each other and somehow try and come up with yeah. something that's... Yeah, it's like if you take yeah. 
like on the news side of things, you've got Fox News and CNN. Those are your mm-hmm. kind of, they're going to cover the same story and it's going to sound very different on either side. But if you go to like an AP or something, it's very much like this happened. <laughs> Right. And there's like yeah. no editorial. Sometimes yeah. there is. Like I'm versus you if know. you pull Daily Wire and like Daily Beast. Right. Those are going to be. I don't think they're going to find any. Yeah. Like commonality <laughs> in an article about those things. So that can cause a lot of confusion. I'm, I'm not trying to. You know, I don't get any kickbacks from this. <laughs> uh, but this is actually the second time. Uh, so I just finished a book called The Wisdom Pyramid by Brett McCracken, and he does a really good job of laying out what's kind of common sense to us Mm -hmm. but he uses the old food pyramid and talks about how you intake things and so uh down on the base that foundation the bible so not even including and then right above that is your local church body that you're in community with then it goes to actually nature because you know nature tells of god's glory Mm -hmm. what can you observe yeah and then uh then it goes to books um, and he gives a whole explanation of why books are more substantial than everything else, reading classics along with new and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, then beauty, which is like art and stuff like that. And on the tip top, the same place sugar goes is the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's, yeah. and he says, it's, you shouldn't throw it out because the yeah. internet's there. Um, and there are some wonderful gems out there. But I, you know, a lot of us know yeah. that, like, oh, I should spend time in my faith community and scripture. Um, but I don't know. It was, yeah, it's just good. But again, in our culture, because because of the internet, and I love the accessibility of right. information on there, and it's so easy, that becomes the go-to. Like, I'll just, you know, what does this person say about it? You know, like, what's the hot take? What's the... And so I listen to that and think, yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I believe. It's like, well, how did you get there? Well, I don't know. Didn't, isn't well, that what... Isn't that what, you know, so-and-so preached or that pastor? Like, that's... Yeah. Well, if you're not critically thinking, a lot of times it's our tendency to just accept what we're hearing as truth. Yeah, right. and, it, and it could very well be that, you know what, when you were listening to that, like, you totally misunderstood what they were saying, because um, that happens a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, I will preach something, somebody will come back and say, hey, you know, when you were saying this and that, and, and they'll have this... You know, story of what happened because of what I said. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I did not say that. Like, yeah. let's go back. And they're like, oh, well, I misunderstood you. I thought you were. So if you just listen to a podcast and you think, oh, well, that's what they said, but you misunderstood what they said or misapplied what they said, then it just takes you on a well, rabbit. And especially in, like, a, yeah. in a medium. I mean, again, calling ourselves out in a medium like this where we're just well, having no. conversation. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's easy for us to misspeak. It's easy for us sure. to, exactly. you know, in the best of intentions, be like, oh, this, and then be like, well... Please judge us by our collective work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. In, yeah, so in the abundance of words, <laughs> you know, sin is unavoidable, or, you know, you're going to say something you shouldn't have said, or it's going to come out wrong, or... It's going to offend do, somebody. Yeah. Do we need to limit, like, each of us get, like, 250 words for the podcast and... 10. You know, oh, <laughs> So, but in those things, like said, so we're talking about like those, that's where lies come in, that's where confusion comes in. Mm -hmm. One of the things I thought was really important, and we've only got about five minutes left, but I wanted to talk about this because I think it's so important for people. Um, I'm actually, we're doing this as a study with our uh, 18 to 25 year olds group as well. It's a book by Jenny Allen called uh, Get Out of Your Head. uh, I believe right. Yeah. Um, And it's, it's that moment of confronting your thoughts. So like you talked about confronting your thoughts you know, you got a little excited and I think you slit someone's throat on like Michael Todd spit in somebody's <laughs> eye. I'm pretty sure if you had a volunteer, you could have like choked him out yeah. and then we would have gone viral. Um, that would have been fun. <laughs> can I get a thing with a volunteer? You got a Jason board. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but you were talking about that moment. Like, what is that moment for your, for you guys? Like, what does that go on in your head? What kind of, what are some contributing factors that help you snap out of that and go, wait a minute, this thought is not on the up and up. How do you shake it down? How do you pat it down? How do you find the danger in that? Um, generally, for me, thoughts that do not um, bring like joy or some sense of encouragement to me, immediately I know this is, this is a questionable thought. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it might not be an evil thought, might not be a demonic thought, but it, it makes me pause to think, well, where is that thought coming from? Okay. Just had a conversation yesterday with somebody who said, 
you know, I'm feeling guilty. Okay, I, I'm just feeling real guilty. All right. So that thought of guilt came from somewhere. Why do you feel guilty? Mm-hmm. Like, so explain that. Well, as we talked through, it was like, well, that was a lie of the enemy saying that you should feel guilty about something that you really shouldn't feel guilty about. Like it was a lie. And so you have to be able to identify things, uh, you know, thoughts in your head uh, quickly and then uh, make an assessment. I can't always assess whether it's evil or good, but I can, I'm getting to where I can assess, does this warrant some more thought of like, why do I feel this? Instead Mm of, I have this thought and there are times and have been times where I had that thought and it did, I could plummet over the edge immediately. It's like a spiral because I can't get rid of that thought instead of, whoa, wait a minute. Why am I thinking that? Where's that coming from? Is it a God thought? Is it not a God thought? If it's not a God thought, then it's an attack to try to get me away from God. If it is a God thought, then I need to explore kind of the depths of that. And it's not going to lead me to a place of depression. Mm-hmm. Right? It's going to lead me to a place of repentance or a place of you know, change. recovery or yeah. change. And so, um, again, it's, it, ultimately, it's the process of discipleship. It's mm-hmm. hearing God, knowing God, becoming more like Him and His Son. And, um, but, yeah, we're all susceptible to hearing things that we shouldn't hear and, and then just owning them. Yeah, yeah. And we shouldn't. Like For, you, you shouldn't, but we do. I actually yeah. explained it to somebody the other day. I said, I treat it like Facebook. Like if you get a shady message in your inbox and Facebook and it looks, even if it looks like it's from somebody, you know, like I usually go, that doesn't sound, you know, like you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. If I get a message like this is from Rick George and it says, Hey man, can you send me $500? Can you wire me $500? I'm sending you a Facebook message that says, Lucas, I need you. Yeah. I'm going, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't sound like Pastor Rick. And I'm going, I'm going to notify him. You know, like, cause I, I think that happens to people too, where they'll go, I feel like, offend, you know, Jake said something to me and it offended me. And rather than going, that doesn't fit with Jake's character. I should go talk to Jake about it's that. Dead on with my character. Yeah. I'm like, even if you just go, well, I'll just delete it. Like you could get another one and another one, you know, it's just yeah. like, and so you realize there's some fit, you know, fake account out there, yeah. but if it's like, and Jake should probably know and be like, Hey dude, is your Facebook account hacked? You know, like, possibly. like I always just tell people like, just sift them like you do your email, go. Oh, that doesn't sound like somebody right. and delete it or make sure you mark it as spam. Like if you have somebody in your life that's negative, go, oh, that guy is going to be negative, you know, so I'm not going to keep getting that in my inbox. Yeah. So again, going back to that question, you have to confront your thoughts. Mm-hmm. We all have thoughts. We're bombarded with thoughts. Thoughts are everywhere. It's not a sin to have a bad thought. It's what you do with that thought. And so the longer that you linger on a thought that is not from God, Can- the further it's going to take you away from God. Can you unsubscribe from that thought? Yeah. So just, <laughs> I wish you could just click a button, Boop. but yeah. So. Final thought, Jake. Then we got it. Yeah. I mean, one thing, is, especially if I'm by myself, um, which a lot of times, you know, if you're really ruminating on something, I'll say a thought aloud where, oh, that's you good. know, um, like I, I just had it happen last night where I was, you know, I was kind of in a songwriting session and I had a thought pop in and I said it aloud and I'm like, and then out loud again, I said, that's a lie. (laughs) And, um, and that happens a lot too. I want to encourage people is a lot of times, like you said, you, you make the mistake and you fall off that pit. When you do that, you need to take time and what got you there? What, what was the lie, you know, because the more like you're going to grow, you're going to mature and you're going to catch those things. Uh, Right when they happen. And that's, that's right. why it's important to have the right people at your table, because if you hear a lie and the wrong person's at the table and then they support that lie, it just solidifies mm, that. And, you're, and you now it's even more difficult to get beyond that. Yeah. It's harder so. to say goodbye to confusion. It, absolutely. We'll see you guys here next week. Follow, uh, hang in there for a seven minute story. Hey, welcome to 7 Minute Stories here on the 167. I am here with the Maddie Cole. Woo. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Maddie, uh, you're here to tell your 7 Minute Story, so mm-hmm. I'm going to put 7 minutes on the clock, and you get to talk about whatever you want for 7 minutes. Tell us the story. Uh, so what do you think you're going to be talking to us 
about? Just a little bit of my testimony and how I came up and where I've gone from there. Awesome. Are you ready? I'm ready. Take it away. All right. So I did not grow up a Christian. I was not in a Christian household ever, really. But I did have a friend named Abby, and she brought me to youth group. And she kind of came for fun just because of the games. And it was summer. And so I was like, well, I'm bored. So I'm going to go play some games. And so I went to youth group a couple weeks. It wasn't that big of a deal. And I decided to go to one of our retreats, Camp Comcito. And while we were there, they asked us to put our three favorite leaders on a note card. And I thought we were just doing that to do that. And apparently they were making small groups. And so I got a text about a week or two later saying I was in Marianne's small group. Shout out to Marianne. Yeah, we love Marianne. Um, I got put into her group and she's actually been the greatest leader in my life. She's like mentored me through all of this. So yes, another shout out to Marianne. But we had to read this book and we had to do like homework throughout the week and for some reason I actually had a drive to do it and so I started doing the homework and she started helping me learn how to dig into the word better and to just do more into knowing Jesus and I believe I was such a God thing because if I would have known I was signing up for a small group I would have never signed up for a small group and so I got to doing that and whenever I find something I have an interest in I take it and I run I don't do anything half-heartedly so I took this interest and I just found everything I could do to grow in my relationship with Jesus and it just got better and better over the years I kept reading my Bible more and about sophomore year I decided I was gonna go to Sunday service as well as youth group I ended up really liking that so I went to Sunday service and youth group so twice a week and then I started reading my Bible more outside of church and I was like okay this is kind of real kind of starting to do this and I met a group of people. It's actually a pretty group, pretty, pretty big group of people that I met at youth group. And we just kind of, we push each other to be better in Christ and to know God better, but we also have a whole bunch of fun outside of that and do a whole bunch of fun things. And that group of people has helped me through so much. I've been, like I was in some dark times and they are the ones who told me like, God's got you. Like they reminded me of how good God was and how much he's done for me when I couldn't see that because I was blinded by darkness. And if I didn't have them, I don't know if I would have like crawled out of my hole. And it's so important to have that group of people because they've helped me through so much. Um, One of the big things that they've helped me with was my hip. I play softball and I was in Oklahoma about two years ago and I was swinging and I felt like a pole on the back of my hip. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal because I'm injured all the time. So I was like, "Eh, it's fine. I'm just going to play through it. Walk it it off. Yep. Pretty much rub some dirt on it. And so I played through it, was fine for the rest of that tournament. The next tournament, every time I walked onto the field, I was in tears. And like I said, I'm hurt all the time. So like when I cry, it's like real pain. And so that's when we realized it was a problem. And we decided that we would stop playing for a little bit, but we kind of played, kind of didn't. And then we decided to go to physical therapy. Nothing was working. So three doctors and three physical therapists later, we decided I was gonna have surgery because I had a partial tear in my labrum and extra bony growth on my hip socket, which was causing the labrum to tear. So I had the surgery and I had regular post-op surgery pain and couldn't walk, kind of sucked. But when I got back to school, I realized I couldn't even sit for more than 40 minutes. I had to get up and get a tissue so I could walk. And I couldn't sit for a long time, I couldn't stand for a long time, couldn't walk for a long time, and I was like, well, this isn't normal. Like, I should not be in this much pain. And so I texted my friend group and I was like, guys, I need prayer. I don't know what to do. I'm worried about what my future is going to be. If like my, I'm going to be in this much pain all the time. And they were like, okay, we're praying for you. But Sydney Oyer actually texted me and she was like, have you ever done a prayer session? And I was like, no, what is that? She explained it to me. And I was like, I don't really think it's going to work, but I might as well give it a shot because I've exhausted all my other options. And so Mike gave me some podcasts to listen to, really like cleared my mind and showed me what God can do and who God is. And so I went to the prayer session, got prayed over, and I felt the Holy Spirit moving through me, felt it moving through everybody in that room. And I believed after that prayer session that God had healed me. Like I just fully believed it. I had not felt any physical healing at that point at all. I just knew it in my heart and I trusted God. And about, I don't know, Five days later, I started doing more leg works at work, like leg workouts at workouts, and started doing softball things, which 
I have not been able to work my legs for two years. And I started doing all these workouts and I'm pain free. Do not have any pain whatsoever besides workout sore because it was weak. You're still gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But praise God, that's awesome. Yes, it was amazing. And I'm still like strengthening everything up right now because season starts in a couple of weeks. But I get to go back to softball, which I've barely been able to do. And I fully believe that God's healed me. If anything ever flares up, I just speak speak over speak that over myself that god has healed me and that this has no power over me and i get through it fine with no pain and that has just helped strengthen my faith so much it's helped me see how good god is who jesus is and it's just helped me spread that to my friends and other people because i want my story to be a testimony to others because i was kind of doubtful before but when i saw god move through me when i saw god move through other people it just made me like go skyrocket and just see how good God really is. What was it about that? Is it, it's the, is it the tangible thing? Is it um, just the proof? Like, what was it about that that really kind of jazzed you up in your faith? Yeah, so when I listened to the podcast, I felt like a change in my heart because I feel like I hadn't really learned a whole bunch about, like, the Holy Spirit or, like, speaking in tongues or anything. It was a lot of just basic stuff, which I had been learning my whole life. And so that when I started digging deeper, it just lit a fire inside of me. And when I saw God actually heal me, like it was a tangible healing. I felt it. I saw a miracle in front of my eyes. That really just like, whoa, okay, this is real. I knew I had an idea it was real, but then like is really real. And I try explaining it to my friends and they believe me, but until they experience it, they're still a little doubtful. And so I'm trying to help them see that through me because even before I felt the healing, I still had a whole change in heart, mm -hmm. but the healing just like shot it through the roof. Yeah. It's, it's hard to do that though. It's hard to believe, have faith even before you see it happen and then mm -hmm. walk in that. But that's awesome. Yes. And what an amazing story. Well, thank you for sharing that with us and uh, thanks for coming on and doing your seven minute story. Yes. Thank you for having me. Look forward to seeing you back. Like I said, you're welcome to come back anytime you want and tell us more about what's going on with you. Okay. All right. Sweet. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode of The 167, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, get notified, leave a five-star rating and a positive review. Tell all your friends to listen as well. Make sure you go over to newlifegardener.com and check out all that we have to offer as a church and check out our messages online as well. Thanks for listening.